All right, here's a problem that is kind of an introduction to how average velocity and instantaneous velocity work together and how related they are. So <clears throat> we're given a moving object whose position function is given by s of t equals t squared, very straightforward, where s is measured in meters and t is measured in minutes. Now we want to determine a simplified expression for the average velocity of the object on this interval. So average velocity, don't forget to label things, over the interval 3 to 3 plus h is going to equal s of 3 plus h minus s of 3 divided by 3 plus h minus 3. Now I'm the kind of person who's going to put everything I want in parentheses because you never know when a negative is going to sneak up on you. So I set up my rate of change here, my change in output over my change in input, and then I'm going to start simplifying it as I go. By the way, that's average velocity, the, the rate of change between two points. So this is equal to, well, s is t squared, so I'm going to replace the t with 3 plus h. So it becomes 3 plus h squared minus 3 squared. I'm going to input the 3 into the t squared. And down here, I can just simplify 3 minus 3 is 0, so I'm left with just h in the denominator. Continuing, all I'm going to do is multiply out the top and simplify. So the top becomes 3 squared plus 6h plus h squared minus 9 divided by h. Well, 3 squared minus 9, those cancel. And then <clears throat> I'm going to go over here. I'm left with 6h plus h squared divided by h. And in the numerator, I can factor out one of these h's. h, 6 plus h squared divided by h. Then those h's cancel, and then I'm left with 6 plus h squared as my simplified expression for the average velocity of the object on that interval. Now, I'm going to actually use this to do this problem down here because I notice that this is 3 plus h, this is 3.2. So 3 to 3 plus h, 3 to 3.2. So this is implying here that h is equal to 0 0.2. Because if I take 3 plus 0 0.2, put 0 0.2 in for h, I get my interval. So if I know my average velocity is 6 plus h squared over 3 to 3 plus h, that means my average velocity from 3 to 3 3.2 is going to be 6 plus 0 0.2 squared. That's the whole reason why we did this generic form up here so we could use it. So don't go redoing everything. Just use the formula that you did. Now when I clear this out and I do 6 plus 0 0.2 squared, I get my average velocity is 6.04. Now this says include units on your answer. 6.04. Now I know from up here it says S is measured in meters, so the numerator here is in meters. T is measured in minutes, so it's meters per minute. So it's 6.04 meters per minute. Now let's do this last problem. Now it says determine the instantaneous velocity of the object where t equals 3, include units on your answer. Now, I'm going to use again this idea that my average velocity from 3 to 3 plus h was defined as 6 plus h. We simplified it down to that unit of measure, or to that little formula. Now remember, instantaneous velocity is just average velocity over really, really, really tiny interval. So if I make h tiny enough, then I can actually estimate the instantaneous velocity at t equal 3 using average velocity. So let's let h be tiny, 0 0.0001. That's a really small number for an estimation here, accurate to about four decimal places. 
So if h is 0 0.001, then my instantaneous velocity at t equal 3 can be approximated by my average velocity from 3 to 3.0001. So that becomes 6 plus um, h squared, and my h is right here, 0 0.0001 squared. <clears throat> so if I work that out, 0 0.0001 squared gives me a really tiny number. So it's going to be 6.1234567.8. So that may, means I can estimate my instantaneous velocity at t equal 3 to be approximately 6 meters per minute. So again, this idea of actually utilizing a formula that you create at the beginning, you can use this for any average velocity or even estimating instantaneous velocity when h is sufficiently small.